Hi everyone, this is Jason Zak from Nathaniel School of Music. In this lesson, we are going to look at what I call as go-to minor chords. For pretty much any situation that you might find yourself in, whether it's composing a movie theme score, whether it's doing something as a singer-songwriter, whether you're rearranging or reharmonizing an existing song, and also, if you're starting off and you don't know much of minor scale theory, this lesson might be a good start for you. So stay tuned till the very end. We are going to tackle some rather new concepts which may not be found in too many music theory settings. So along with forming the chords, we are also going to look at building a melody line and supporting it with a left hand arpeggio to close things off. So... Get your keyboards out. It'll be very helpful there. And also get a book out. All of my notes is available on our Patreon page for just $5 a month. You can consider getting yourselves a copy. And before we get started, it'll be awesome if you can consider hitting that subscribe button and turning on the bell icon for regular notifications. Let's get cracking. So for this lesson, let's explore the key of D. So when it comes to minor chords, minor chords generally exist within a minor scale, right? And what I'd like to do is to introduce a rather versatile minor scale, which is what I like to call the hybrid minor. So if you take the key of D, which we'll keep through for this lesson, if you take D natural minor, if you take D harmonic minor, there are small variations, right? Now the hybrid minor just brings all of them together and you just get to use all of them together in one amalgamation, so to speak. So all minor scales have one thing in common. That would be the minor third. So that distinguishes them from the major third. And I'm not going to bother much about what I call as the exotic notes or the exotic minor, which would be the flattening of the two, the minor two, that is, or the tritone, which is the flattening of the five. It's going to be one... Major 2, minor 3rd, perfect 4, perfect 5. So these 5 notes will be consistent for the entire lesson. Actually for all minor scales. But now to go forward, the 6 and the 7 could be different. You could either have the minor 6th which is the B flat. That's a flat 6 or the major six, which is used a lot for the melodic minor scale as well as the Dorian mode, or you could just call it the Dorian scale as well. But the flat six is used more for the natural minor and the harmonic minor. Then coming to the seventh degree, now if you do minor seventh, that will be forming the natural minor. Natural minor would be related to some major scale. So if you take D natural minor, it has one flat, which is the major scale that has one flat F major, right? So natural will have a flat six and a flat seven in addition to the flat three, of course. And then the harmonic minor has a major seventh instead of the minor 7 or the flat 7. And it's interesting or important to note that between the 6 and the 7, there is a bigger gap. It's a gap of an augmented second, also known as a minor third. You have a 1, 2, and a 3 step. Usually when you're forming a major scale or a minor scale, it's 2 steps and 1 step, right? Major scale, 2, 2, 1, 2, Two, two, one. But now the harmonic minor has this three step motion at the end. So, in a nutshell, you can build four minor scales using this principle. You have a flat three always. So, that's root major second, minor third, perfect fourth, perfect fifth will stay. And then the permutations in and around the flat six versus normal six. Flat 7 versus major 7 would be 4. So if you have flat 6, flat 7, natural minor. If you have flat 6 and raised or major 7th, harmonic minor. 
if you have raised six or major sixth and flat seven you will have the dorian mode or the dorian scale if you have raised six as well as raised seven you'll have what we call the melodic minor scale not the classical melodic minor because it has directional properties this would be called more like the jazz melodic minor i'm not going to focus on that for today's lesson is just going to be mainly the the minors that you use more often the harmonic minor and the natural minor so the assortment of all these intervals that would be 1 to 3 flat 4 5 Six flat six, seven flat seven is what I call as the versatile minor scale, also known as the hybrid minor. You can listen to a few compositions of mine on what I'm calling the hybrid minor in my riffs website, where we've categorized the types of minor scales for the compositions that we put out daily. So do check that out in the description. So let me now walk you through some go-to chords that can be built around the key of D minor or D hybrid minor. So first off, you need to look at your tonic, namely D, and learn the tonic chord. from its first degree in the bass that would be d minor with a d in the bass then you have d minor with an f in the bass then you have a d minor with an a in the bass now this may not be traditional minor scale chord theory but just stick with me as these chords can be used to harmonize a variety of music so tonic with a tonic bass then you have a tonic with a third flat bass that's d minor slash f then you have a tonic with an a bass so degree 1 chord is covered d minor d minor with an f d minor with an a okay now the second degree and the fourth degree which i also call as a uh, predominant or subdominant chords would be the e minor 7 flat 5 or else that the fourth degree you have the g minor 6th now uh, an interesting fact is the e minor 7th flat 5 is an inversion or very similar in notes actually it has the same notes but in jumbled order as G minor sixth. Now you may be thinking the second chord. Can I not just play it as E diminished? You can, but to get that flavor out of the second, it's very important to bring in that minor seventh flavor. So you have your tonic and your two minor seventh flat five, also represented with a half diminished sign. That's a phi, Greek symbol phi. D minor. E minor seven flat five, D minor E minor seventh, or E half diminished, E my D minor, and you can invert. You can play E minor seven flat five starting on the G, and you get a different flavor. So you can first of all practice that with the tonic. I'm just working out those two chords with respect to the tonic. If you're facing problem with shifting, you can use the other tonics that I mentioned earlier. That's basically inversions of D minor, but I'm calling it as D minor slash F. So you know that that's the bass. D minor slash A. So you know that that's the bass. So the first thing you want to play around is all the three variations of the tonic. root position first second coupled or combined with the e minor 7 flat 5 that's the two half diminished and the four minor sixth let's see how that goes And it 
doesn't have to be me rambling on with some random melody. It can even be a famous tune. I, I guess you must have heard this one. a lot of material. Okay, and I've not yet brought in some of the other chords like the obvious dominant seventh or a diminished seventh chord which will make it sound very obviously minor. This could be your first mission, I would say. Take your three tonics, couple it with the E minor seven flat five which is your uh, two minor seven flat five and your four minor sixth chord and just practice them with the tonic and just maybe build a basic melody you can do if you're playing a right hand melody just something simple like that Basically, practice these in a scalar approach. You can just go up and down the scale if you wish. So, D minor, E minor 7 flat 5, D minor with an F bass, G minor 6th, D minor with an A bass, and then you have a B flat a bass, but you're still playing the same G minor 6th, and then end on the tonic. down that's another way to practice it i've done a tutorial of this particular exercise we link that up with you in the description as well so do check that out after watching this of course now this can get you going to play well any you can tran you can make a nursery rhyme sound minor you can make pretty much any song which was major to sound minor or you can uh, harmonize an existing minor scale song like i showed you with the godfather theme you can take that also and just move around with these two chord concepts now these are basically two chords d minor in three shapes and then you have your two minor seven flat five which gets inverted and that's also your four but it's essentially two chords played with their respective inversions right so for the most part the tonic chord with its three inversions and the two chord that can which can be inverted to the four are more than enough for most minor scale music. You can harmonize, reharmonize anything you, you are faced with. It could be a nursery rhyme, it could be a movie theme or even your own composition. Now moving forward, let's bring in some major chords that work really awesome with the existing rather painful, melancholic, sad minor bass which we've set the major chords will add a lot of hope make it very brave and also add some epicness to the to the party so to speak if you build it from the degree or from the tonic it would be from the degree three flat six flat and seven flat so from d as the root with d as keeping d as the root what will be the three flat it would be f right what would be the six flat be B flat right and what will be the 7 flat it would be C now mind you these major chords may not be there in all the other scales like you won't find the F major in the D harmonic minor scale 
that will form an F augmented. But it's important to just keep this all packaged together when you're dealing with the minor as the, a hybrid minor, as I called it. So you take D minor, now go to the three flat major. Immediately some hope. Okay, now let's look at B flat major, which is the six flat. And a lot of hope there. And with B flat, you can play it either as a ambient major seventh. You can even play it as a major sixth. It sounds a bit more grander. Major 7th, a bit more mellow, a bit more dreamy or just normal, regular old B-flat major. So, And if you now bring that to the F, it starts sounding a lot brave if you ask me. the final one which is the seven flat major so you need to remember your available three major chords and there's a fourth major chord which the dorian brings in that will start making it sound a lot more epic and you know bringing that brave sound even more out d minor g major d minor If you make a progression, D minor, F, C, G. Okay, this sounds a lot more uplifting, positive compared to... major chord add, add addition D is still the root it's still a kind of a D minor kind of scale but when you add the major chords versus the minor 7 flat 5 and the minors it moves from something more uh, painful or melancholic or traditional minor sounding music to something a lot more positive, hopeful and brave and so on. So I've covered the tonic chord. I've covered the tonic with all its inversions. Then we covered what we call as the predominant chord, which is the two minor seven flat five and then the four minor six. They're inversions of each other. Then we looked at the three available majors, namely the three flat major in the key of D, that would be F major, the seven flat major and the six flat major in the key of D that will be B flat major as well as C major. The B flat major you can play as a major seventh as well as a major sixth and I forgot to mention in the C major which is the seven flat major you can embellish it with a seventh chord with a dominant seventh so that would be a flat seven in addition to the major chord. Ta -da -da. you want to make it Dorian, you can bring in that that 4 major going to the 1 minor. The last two chords to cap off this discussion would be the dominant chords. I've left, I've sort of saved the best for last. That would be the A7th or the A major. That would be the 5 degree as well as the 7 degree. So the 5 degree of the D, the key of D would be A and A7th would be the dominant. So just with the tonic, the pre and the dominant, you can get, get to a lot of music.
that's a pre that's a dominant even though i'm not playing perhaps the exact godfather theme chords it kind of works because one of these chords is going to sound good with minor the tonic the predominant and now the dominant and if you want to make the dominant chord a lot more versatile what i would suggest is learn the diminished seventh chord as well one diminished seventh chord actually has four diminished seventh chords in them they are all inversions of each other so if you take the seventh degree of d what i like to do to form the seventh instead of going all the way up there i can go just down one step so that will be c sharp so this would be c sharp diminished seventh so you have to learn diminished seventh chords when you're harmonizing music on the minor so c sharp diminished seventh would be a a, a group of minor thirds minor 3 here minor 3 here and another minor 3 here so c sharp e g b flat to do 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 now c sharp diminished seventh could form could also become e diminished seventh also form g diminished seventh la da 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 it could also form b flat d flat e g b flat diminished seventh so you have all these four so get used to playing them in all their inversions so i've told you tonic in all the three predominant in all the two for now two is enough and now i'm telling you this diminished seventh chord also to be practiced with their different inversions okay so diminished seventh you'll have to practice four inversions uh, tonic just three because the minor chord is enough for now remember these are the go to chords they are not all the chords of minor you might want to watch a few lessons where i've explored the specific minor scales in great detail i've i've given some rather unique facts about the harmonic minor scale so we we'll leave a very detailed tutorial in the description i've also done a deep dive into the dorian mode in with some of my music and some popular songs so do check that out as well so in terms of dominant chords dominant chords first of all have a property that they want to resolve to the tonic they are unstable entities so the two dominant chords will be the dominant seventh a seventh which is at the fifth degree and then the c sharp diminished seventh that can be inverted in those four ways and that resolves to the tonic so a seventh resolves to d then c sharp diminished seventh resolves to d minor okay so a common way to use this would be play a predominant then a dominant and then resolve to the tonic maybe you don't want that predominant you do the four minor now do a diminished seven and then you do the tonic and what i like to do at the end if you want to uh, avoid that consistent minor drone you can play a major chord and then resolve to it to a minor so the major chords always can break the monotony or break the the current mood so if you just do minor tonic with the three inversions the predominant and then just the two dominants it's going to sound pretty sad just like a minor theme traditional minor theme but the moment you start adding the major chords to the party it starts becoming more hopeful more epic more brave and you'll include a lot more uh, positive or happier sounding vibes while you play right everyone so in a nutshell what we've done is we've taken the key of d we formed the hybrid minor scale then we've looked at the tonic the predominant the dominant chords from that particular scale we've categorized the chords with their respective inversions we've looked at all the major chords in one package we've talked about the diminished seventh the dominant seventh and how i would recommend that you use this would be to just play a song even if it's a song which is on major like it could be 
you know this right the little star so you, you can just try and see how these chords can work with that melody So I kind of like the predominant there. I, I'm doing the next predominant G minus. How I wonder what dominant you are. Maybe twinkle, twinkle with more positivity. Twinkle, twinkle. G major. Na, 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 na. Back to my now. Sadder chords. See, you can pretty much take any piece of music and. work around with these chords now like i said these are not all the minor chords there are a few more do check out my other videos we leave some some of them in the description you can also go to our channel home page where you'll find our lessons categorized into neat playlists and if you feel that some of these topics are a bit advanced for you you can always consider joining a, a school doing a semester at nathaniel school of music and figuring out your skill level you can combine topics like theory ear training rhythm composition into a module and also learn an instrument like the piano figure out some technique and plan a, a nice 6 uh, month semester if you don't have the time to come to our school or learn live lessons you can also consider downloading pre recorded material pre recorded courses found on nathanielschool.com and again this is jason zack from nathaniel school of music thanks a ton for watching the video cheers